I'm just a regular guy who works nights and has a family. But for three years now, I roam the streets as a costume activist named Zeta Man. Along with Agent Knoll and other civil-minded individuals, we seek out different avenues to make an impact in our city. We aren't millionaires, nor do we have superpowers, but that doesn't stop us from finding new and interesting ways to make a difference. Being the change you want to see in this world isn't easy, but we're giving it a shot. This is Real Adventures of Zeta Man. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Agent Null. Agent Null, my wife and I, we went up to Seattle to go help out at Operation Treehouse to raise toys for foster kids. So we drove up to Seattle and we were going to spend a couple of days up there, meet up with some other local real life superheroes up there and they were going to come and help us out. And the next day we were going to take whatever money we earned from the benefit concert to uh, buy toys for foster kids for Christmas. The alternates is a group of civil-minded individuals. It's not just for superheroes. We also have people who are, they just want to make a difference in their community and they want to do it as creatively as they can. The Black Knight is a real life superhero that's based in Tacoma in Seattle. He travels back and forth. He does detective work, investigates child kidnappings, finds tips and gives them over to the police and stuff like that. His costume is actually very cool. He modified it himself out of paintball gear, motocross chest protector, paintball helmet. It's really cool and he's not done. I, I can't wait to see like the next version because I mean I expect the next one's gonna have like lasers and missile launchers out the shoulders or something. The Dreamer, who is kind of like the humanitarian, he's more of the, he's like the opposite. But they're really cool because they're both opposite of what they do, but they both work together. It's kind of like Superman and Batman, you know? You have the Dreamer, who's the more uh, flashy guy, he's the more colorful guy, and he's more with the public. It's really, really cool, those two. The local group for Seattle, we were kind of asking them and seeing if they wanted to be part of the alternate. I wasn't exactly sure if they wanted to join the alternates because, you know, that's like something I created. So we just kind of talked to them, asked them, like, hey, you want to join the alternates? And they're like, yeah, sure. We also gave them some first aid kits from the Red Cross that we use as well. So we have like this, you know, Northwest team now, this, you know, massive Northwest team, which is pretty awesome. We were expecting um, another person from Seattle, uh, Neurocybex. The plan was Neurocybex was supposed to meet us at 7. He was late. We tried calling him, he didn't answer his phone. We're at the point where we're thinking, hey, you know, we're gonna just go. All of a sudden there's a knock on our second story hotel room window. Hi! You're insane! Yeah. Come on in! Dude, you could have just used the lobby like every like normal people. See? He's probably gonna be wanting to do the skylight too. We open the window, there's Neurocybex, and he just kind of looks at us and goes, oh, hey guys. I was pissed. Jeez, he also had that. Yeah, it's a cool logo though. Yeah, it's a logo. You wanted to your phone, you were scaling the hotel. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Oh, shit. At least you're only on the second floor. Neurocybex is actually a very, very interesting fellow. Um, he believes passionately in the superhero idea. Yeah. And he wants to emulate it the best he can. Is some of the Chinese military police surplus? Oh, it's a million volter. Watch this. No! No! Come on, dude. No! He climbed a glass, like a glass enclosure to get up there so he could have broken the window. And the fact that he just kind of walked around the block and he was just looking in the windows to see if he can see any kind of hint of who was in there, that was kind of, uh, kind of it was kind of scary. I knew that that was the beginning of something, but I had no idea that it was going to be as bad as it was. We went up to Waldo's Bar and Grill. You know, it started snowing just a little bit. We also met Big Country. I think he was a little hesitant at first because he's a MC for rap concerts and all of a sudden here comes all these weirdos in superhero uniforms and stuff like that. But you know, we had on the flyer, real life superheroes, this is gonna be real life superheroes. I think he was surprised because it's that initial shock of, oh my God, these guys are actually wanting to be superheroes, you know? That's like weird. But you know, once we talked to him, he kind of warmed up a little bit and warmed up to the idea and understand what was going on. There was a girl outside who said one of, one of these guys came in earlier. She was working in shift, but a guy came in with a black mask. She was scared to know what to do. <laughs> Probably wanted to jump. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not standing in a bar that often see somebody dressed in all black with a mask on you. Yeah. When we first came to the event, I mean, it was hardly anybody there. It was mostly just the bands that were there. It was just 
pouring down snow. I was just worried we'd go to the treehouse people with like $10 worth of Hot Wheels or something like that and just kind of sit there and there you go.